hear me out, hear me out, right? This year has been so horrible, the sooner we get to Christmas, the sooner it's over. That's why that's there. Any questions? Thought not. Here is your wrestling news. WWE are looking to do something different for Royal Rumble 2021. Future plans for The Fiend have been revealed, and we have details of a scrapped storyline for a top SmackDown star. We'll get to it in a bit. Since we are looking ahead, let's look to January and the Royal Rumble. The best wrestling pay-per-view of the year, don't even at me. And it's going to feel different this time around. WrestleVotes put out a tweet where they say, regardless of the next location for the Thunderdome, it is expected to last into February. However, WWE is working on something different for the Royal Rumble event. They want fans, even if it's just for that one show. So currently the situation, the layout for the Thunderdome doesn't allow for any physical bodies to be in the crowd, but they are looking to make some changes to the Thunderdome. Should it be at Amway or should it be somewhere else, uh, which will allow for fans to be there live to react to what's going on. And it's a, I think that those Royal Rumble Rumble pops are something that I think we will all miss in this particular rumble. Like the, you know, look to the one in January, the Edge pop, that re the return of Edge and the noise the crowd made. We're going to miss stuff like that this year. So WWE is keen to try and bring some of that, even if it is just a, a small smattering of fans along with the Thunderdome setup. Uh, is, we'll have to wait and see what we do with this one. I, for one, am just glad to see the Rumble coming round again because it means it's nearly the end of the year and it is the best pay-per-view of the year. And we may even have fans there this time round. Let me in. Not my words, the words of your scary flatmate that lost their keys on a night out. And the words of The Fiend slash Bray Wyatt. He and Alexa Bliss have been a pretty big part of Raw since they moved over to the brand following the draft. They very much, pretty much bookended most episodes of Monday Night Raw have The Fiend and Alexa Bliss. And that isn't by a happy accident because uh, this comes from PW Insider. They say that WWE officials view The Fiend, Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss as the top baby faces on the Raw brand. So of all the, the baby faces on the show, Alexa Bliss and Fiend are, are the top ones. And that's despite the fact the Fiend is ostensibly a heel character, but a cool heel character. WWE makes me nervous when they do stuff like this, when you've got like a super well-established cool bad guy and they can't help but listen to the support of the fans and make them a good guy. You know, we're talking what they did with Bobby Roode in the last couple of years. When people were singing Glorious, they made him a good guy. Oh, that worked out right. That worked out all right. We go all the way back to like the 90s with Doink the Clown, when Doink was just this brilliant, psychopathic, uh, super twisted, evil clown. And they went, oh, people like him. Let's make him a good guy. And you just neuter the guy overnight. So there are some fears when you're making The Fiend a top baby face because you run the risk of potentially watering that product down somewhat. I guess we'll wait and see how, how this pans out. Right now, The Fiend involved with uh, Randy Orton uh, looking looking to get some Rowenge following the burning of the Wyatt compound all those years ago. So he kind of puts, puts Bray into the mix with Randy and Drew McIntyre and apparently is a baby face. Don't mess with him too much, please. Thank you. Tony Khan has officially announced the signing of two indie standouts to AE Dub, that being Anthony Bowens and Max Caster. You may have seen these guys competing on AEW Dark. They've impressed the right people with the look and the sound and the vibe that they've got. And now they're on the books. You may have seen Caster and Bowens, a part of uh, indies around the country in America, uh, create a pro. They were at Beyond Wrestling. They both did stuff at CZW. You might have even uh, Sid Bowens uh, as part of NXT a couple of years back. In fact, there was talk that WWE wanted to bring Bowens in last year, but for whatever reason, those conversations stalled and now it's too late because now he's a part 
of AEW instead. And good luck to both of them. They're just a really exciting, potentially young, if they're going to keep them as a tag team, which I hope they do, exciting tag team uh, to add to the tag division on AEW. Staying with AEW, Tony Khan also told PW Insider that there are some changes to the medical process within the company. This follows the awkward situation a few weeks back uh, with Alex Reynolds, where he was knocked out in the middle of the ring and they want to make sure that something like that doesn't happen again. So Tony Khan talked about some of the plans they've got now for their medical protocol. He says that Khan has uh, hired another independent neurologist and an independent doctor who will be present at all the shows. Uh, there was obviously medical team there already, but they've added to it. Khan also added that he's implemented some two-way communication systems between the guys in the ring and guys backstage, uh, which I'm surprised wasn't there before, to be honest with you. That kind of seems like something that I was certainly I mean, WWE do that, but certainly I've been at independent shows that have done that, and it seems like an obvious one to have, whereby they can talk backstage if they feel like something's going amiss, or backstage can relay information uh, more, 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 more appropriately to the referees should things go a bit awry. Now, another thing that Tony Khan has said is that at full gear, uh, they will have uh, as a very special guest, Christopher Nowinski. Now, Nowinski uh, is the co-founder of the Concussion Legacy Foundation. So he's going to be there uh, to oversee and chat to a few of the people there as well. So AEW seems to be taking what happened with Alex Reynolds a couple of weeks ago very seriously and looking to make some changes behind the scenes. Turning Point is shaping up for Impact Wrestling. Uh, we know now the main event will see Rich Swan defend his world championship against Sammy Callahan. That should be a fun match to have. Callahan has just been, and I know it's, it's, it's stating the obvious, he's been such a force of nature since, the, since he broke away from WWE and found himself as Sammy Callahan in Impact Wrestling. He's been a star for them. So glad to see him back in the mix at the top. We'll also see Sue Young defending the Knockouts Championship against Diana Perrazzo. It's going to be uh, a no count out, no DQ, anything goes match between those two. We will also see Willie Mack taking on Moose. And I'm very intrigued by this one. We'll also have a match between Brian Myers and Swoggle, the artist formerly known as Horn Swoggle in WWE. Also, the tag team titles will be on the line. The North are going to be defending them against the Good Brothers. So Turning Point shaping up to be a good one. You'll be able to watch it on Impact Plus, their streaming platform. Uh, if you already subscribe to it, you'll get it as part of the, uh, the package. Uh, should be a fun show. And Finalamo, everyone's favorite gothic pirate, Alistair Black, is now a part of SmackDown. But there were some big plans for him on Monday Night Raw that didn't quite come to fruition. Selena Vega was on Lillian Garcia's Chasing Glory podcast, and she talked about some of the things that uh, she's been enjoying at the moment about WWE. And also she talked about a proposed storyline that would see her real life relationship with Alistair Black, their husband and wife ofs, and they would see that brought to television and it would involve Andrade and the US Championship. Zelina Vega says the plan was for Andrade to lose the US Championship to Alistair Black as a result of some confusion from Zelina Vega. They were going to continue this story where whereby Zelina Vega was suddenly a bit torn between her clients and who would be revealed to be her real life husband. They were gonna bring that real life relationship to the camera. They chose not to do that. And now obviously, whilst they're still on the same brand together, that is still something they could end up doing. But for now, it seems to have been parked. So whilst, see what you want about real life relationships coming into the wrestling world like that. I for one am sad that we didn't see Alistair Black as the US champion. That would have been, that would have been good times. Later today on the Cultaholic YouTube channel, a brand new episode of Desert Island Graps. I had the pleasure of taking a Zoom call with New Japan voice and former WWE announcer Kevin Kelly. We chatted about wrestling, his life in radio, and of course he picked three wrestling matches that he would watch while stranded on a desert island. Not only will you be able to hear this interview via the Cultaholic podcast feed as normal, but you'll be able to see it as well. It'll be on the YouTube channel a little later on today. Before I let you go, I just want to say thank you. We put the wrestling with mental health video on the YouTube channel on Monday and the response has been amazing. So thank you very much. If you're one of those people that reached out to send love to Ross after he shared his story, Ross told his story in his words. I have never been more proud to call Ross my friend. And if you haven't seen it yet, 
I would highly recommend watching it. It may just resonate with you. In a year that has been incredibly tough, always know that you're not alone and there will never not be good people. Stay safe. Love you, bye.